We saw the 10 port, 24 port and 48 port. Well, let's say hello to the 8 port Pro XG switch. And this is the first look at the switch itself. You can see at the front, it has eight 10 gigabit ports. And if we go a little bit closer, you will see that they are PoE++. You can see the plus plus signs on them. We have two 10 gig SFP plus ports. Now you can use these to uplink to another switch, which we will probably do right here. And then on the back, we have a input, which is the 54 volt DC input and the power brick comes with it. Now this is the 210 watt version and something that comes with it is something you can use to mount it against the wall. So we can slide this in here and and that sits nicely in there. So if you are looking to get this mounted, you can do that. We also have a mount for the switch as well. So if this is something you are gonna be mounting on the wall or under your desk, it just makes it that little bit more simple. We have the template that we've come to see with all the Ubiquiti devices. One thing I didn't see though was a template for this. So maybe you're gonna to have to use a level for this one. It's not something that's in the box. We have a bunch of screws and as always, when you order from the EU store in the UK, you get the EU plug, but they will also send you a UK plug with it as well. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the technical specifications. So I mentioned that there is eight 10 gigabit ports on here. There is ether lighting on here and we'll take a look at that just shortly. On the top, this is made of polycarbonate and on the back there is aluminium alloy. We have a couple of vents here. We'll turn it on shortly to see if there are any fans inside. It has a total of 155 watts of PoE power that it can output. And for anybody that may want to know, all these ports at the bottom can be one gig, 2.5 gig, five gig, or even 10 gig. If you want to get the tray fitted inside here, we need to take this off, all four of them. We can place it straight on here like so and clip it in. First things first, we can plug the power straight into here. So we can go and pop this and give this some power. And I'll show you just now the ether lighting as you'll see that turn on just now. And that will take the focus away from my face. There you go. You can For anybody wanting to know if there's any fans inside, there definitely is, because I can hear this as I turned it straight on. Let's get this connected to our existing network and we can take a look at some of the settings. And this is what I'm gonna to use to get it connected. This is a multi-gig RJ45 transceiver. This is an RJ45 to SFP plus adapter. So we can take one of these out. So we'll take out port eight and we'll pop this in here. And then we have an ethernet cable that goes to my network switches and we can pop this in right here. Then we're gonna see it, we'll go to the console and we'll see it pop up and we can get it adopted. Before we dive into the console, let's take a look at some of the other settings while that is getting booted up. So we have the Pro XG8 PoE and that comes in at 499. There are 14 different switches that you can buy that have 10 gig ethernet, but this is one of the two compact utility switches. We have the Flex 10 gigabit ethernet, which is a compact five port, only a layer two switch, which does have PoE output. This had four 10 gig ports and one one gig port. Now the Pro XG has 10 gig across the board. Then we have the Pro Max and the aggregation switches and then the enterprise switches, which I'm not gonna go through in this point. Having a quick look at the comparison between the Pro 8 PoE, the Enterprise 8 PoE and the Pro XG PoE. These are the three different models that you can get at this point. So the Pro PoE, is eight one gigabit ethernet ports and two 10 gig SFP plus ports. The enterprise PoE is eight 2.5 gigabit ports and two SFP plus ports. And then we have the Pro XG switch. So this is where it sits in the lineup. You can see that right here. We have all three of them and they all have 10 gig SFP plus ports. The Pro and Enterprise only give 120 watts, whereas the Pro XG gives 155 watts. And you can see as you go up, the switching capacity goes up as well. And if you wanted a price on those, the Pro comes in at 349, the Enterprise comes in at 479, and the Pro XG comes in at 499. In terms of value for money, if you are looking at the Enterprise version, you may be better off looking at the Pro XG for $20 more. We're gonna move on to now doing a quick throughput test, and I don't expect the results to be any different. I expect to have 10 gig throughput from one port to another. So I have my machine right next to me, which I'm gonna plug in right here. So we'll plug that into port one. And then behind me, I have my Mac Studio, which also has a 10 gig NIC in it. So we can plug that in right here. As I mentioned, I don't expect to see any different. We're on the same network, we're on the same switch. I'm expecting to see a 10 gig throughput, but I'm gonna show you this anyway, nonetheless. We can see the Pro XG switch here. And if we go into port manager, you can see I have two devices. So I have my desktop, 10 gig, 
Mac Studio 10 gig and the Pro XG Uplink, which is also 10 gig. So I have 10 gig running across the board. For my Mac Studio, I know my IP address is 10.1.1.1.9.5 and that's port 3001 and here is the upload and download scenario. So we click start. So we can see straight off we're getting 9.45 Yep, seven, eight. So we're pushing to 10 gig there. So we're pretty much maxing out the connection right here, 9.8. So we are maxing this out right there. And then we'll go across and we'll wait for the upload just now. And again, it's maxing out the connection, 9.8, 9.9. We're getting the full throughput. And that's what I would come to expect with these devices right here. I mean, we're across the same VLAN. We're on the same switch. I'm just proving to you that the 10 gig does definitely happen. Looking at the Pro XG itself, we can see along the right hand side, we have a couple of devices connected. If we go into insights, we can see more about it, what version we're running and the settings. So just like every other ether lighting switch, we have the speed or the network. We can choose whichever one we want. And whether we're running a 10 gig, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, or you want to choose the type of network, you have a couple of options. You can give it DHCP or static IP, and then you have the advanced settings down here too. Looking within Port Manager, nothing that we already haven't seen. There's nothing out of the ordinary. So if we click on a device, we can see what port it is, what VLAN it's on, whether you want to allow multiple tagged VLANs, PoE, and then the advanced settings also in here. Going back to the settings of the Pro XG, there was one thing I didn't show you, which was the PoE power in use. Another use case for this is the Pro XG and the Pro XGS access points and even the E7, you can plug that straight in. So we'll go into a port at the front and we'll plug that straight into here. And um, we should see some light coming on there in just a second. There you go, that light's just popped up on, on there. And if we give this, if we come back in a few more minutes, we should see the PoE power in use. We should see what's being drawn from there. And that access point is now booted up and you can see the PoE power right there that's in use, 13.7 watts. So that's the Pro XGS model. And if I was to plug in another one, it'd probably take the similar 11, 12, 13 watts for another device. So as I mentioned, this does give out 155 watts worth of power. So you have plenty of power available within. Now, there's a couple of things that I definitely know that you're all gonna be interested in. That is, well, how loud is it? and how hot does it get? Now, I've been running this for a few hours, maybe having a few devices plugged in, my desktop and my Mac, and also having an access point plugged into it. So I also have the XGS on there. And I can tell you my computer right next to me is a little bit louder than what this is. So when I run the sound test, I'm gonna make sure I turn my lights off because my lights also have some fans in. So my, the picture might be a little bit different to what you're used to. But initially, let's jump into the heat settings. And if we turn this on, so we're about 42, 43, so about 45 degrees, 46 degrees running right there. And for my viewers that want to know Fahrenheit, we have about 115, 117 Fahrenheit. Now I will say it's quite a warm day here today. So the room temperature itself in here is quite warm. So if you have an air conditioned room or you're gonna be in another room that's a little bit cooler than this, you should be perfectly fine running this. But even with the temperature as it is, it is perfectly happy running this and I've not had any issues at all. In terms of sound and what you can hear, uh, this is obviously going to be me talking, but I'm going to go quiet for a second. That's about 35, 36 decibels that you can see on here. And I'm just going to turn everything off. Now I'm hoping you can see this. I've turned the LED on this and with me talking again around 70 to 75 decibels. But if I go completely silent, we're about 30 to 31 decibels when I go completely silent. If you have other items in your office that are gonna be set up such as things like PCs or anything or anything else that has another fan in it, chances are it's gonna be louder than this device right here. With everything turned off and everything silent, I can just about hear the fan. So for those that wanna know what the noise level might be if it's sat right next to you, well, that's what it's gonna be like. When would you be using something like this? So if you have a compact setup, that you don't want to have a full rack version for, and eight ports are definitely enough for you, then something like this would be ideal, paired with something like the Cloud Gateway Fiber, or if you want something that's gonna give you the PoE++ power, and again, for example, someone like me who has multiple 10 gig devices in your room and you need the PoE++ power for other devices, you can plug that straight into this. I think this is definitely gonna be my new favorite switch. It has 10 gig PoE++ ports across the board. 
it's compact, it's versatile, I can keep it on my desk without any issues. It has the layer three features within and it's easily controllable and configurable from Unify Network. Now, some people might see that as a con that you can't set this up as a standalone, but if you've been within the Unify ecosystem for a little while, you know that that is the case with most of their devices. I can definitely get 10 gig out of this going through. Going across VLANs might be a different story because this switch is definitely one I'm gonna be using in the future and it covers all my needs that I have. So depending on what your setup is, if you're looking for that 10 gig PoE++, you're looking for the SFP+, and you're looking for PoE++ power, this has it all, all built into eight to 10 ports. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if there's something you would use in your setup or whether you would look to deploy something like this. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.